The Amiga 500 Mini is about to release here in the UK and later in the US. Thank you to Koch Media for sending this review kit out because today we're taking a deep dive and I'm going to be covering some things that other reviewers haven't been mentioning that I feel might be general um, bonus tidbits of information about this fantastic piece of hardware. I will say I'm incredibly impressed so far and this could rapidly become my favourite mini console thus far and I'm going to tell you exactly why. In today's episode we're going to be unboxing this, we're going to be demoing every single game on the base unit and I'm going to be showing you how and where to find the hidden game on the A500 Mini. Before we get started, I'm going to link every single episode I've ever done covering an Amiga home computer in the description and in the pinned comment. So if the Amiga is your thing, you can expect more content from me. Make sure you subscribe, sit back and listen to what I've got to say. The A500 Mini is a compact reimagining of the Amiga 500 home computer, featuring perfect emulation of not only the original A500, but also the advanced graphics architecture AGA, of the Amiga 1200. Play one of the included 25 classic Amiga games selected from a simple to use carousel including all time greats like Alien Breed, Another World, Chaos Engine, Simon the Sorcerer and Worms. Or play the games from your own USB stick, whatever suits you best. Plus you can access your save and resume anytime you wish and uh, this is a beautiful piece of kit. And now that I've finished reading that slight excerpt from the official website, I can gather my attention towards this unboxing. As you guys can see, the A500 is gorgeously packaged. I'm trying to do my best here to show you guys everything that's inside the box as well as outside the box. You have the controller boxed within a box, the tank mouse, which we're going to be taking a look at. We've got the console itself, a quick start guide and an official instruction manual. Inside each of the boxes within boxes, we have the tank mouse as well as this gorgeous floppy disk USB. Now I mentioned a minute ago that you can utilize the USB to load your own Amiga games onto this and it is extremely easy to do. In this video, like I said in the introduction, I will demo how you access the bonus game which have come directly from the developers of this Amiga 500. It's actually Citadel which is the bonus game that you can access super easily. So we're going to be taking a look, well a quick look here, at the, uh, well we've got the, the power cord, we've got the controller, which it is easy to make comparisons with the Amiga CD32 controller. This is actually slightly smaller. Um, it's a really nice ergonomic feel to it, if I'm brutally honest with you, I didn't expect such class. Now on the back we have a USB-C power cord, HDMI slot, two US, uh, three USB slots rather, all ready to plug everything into and the cables for the controller and the tank mouse are approximately 1.75 meters in length. I'm not seeing a lot of that, that information on other reviewers videos but I think especially with the controller it's important to mention the length of the cable especially if you're going to be using your Amiga 500 mini for a little bit of couch co-op. Now you can buy an additional controller for this I do believe there's one on their website it is black and there's also a joystick you can purchase as well if you would prefer to play with a joystick for me I'm definitely all about having the controller in my hand and I've mentioned again it does feel really really nice and ergonomic it's got quite a bit of weight to it which means for me it doesn't feel very tacky it feels like a good sturdy quality product in terms of quality product I think the instruction manual which is a classic thing for us from the 80s and 90s always gliding through the instruction manual of a console a computer or a game this is phenomenal there's absolutely everything in here if you read this from front to back you'll never need to watch a how-to youtube video because everything is in here including how to access your secret game you can remap the controller i will say 
that this guide comes in that like the, the main instruction manual comes in English only but in the quick start guide that I'm about to show you that does come in multiple languages so bear that in mind if you are buying this and you are on the continent of Europe So as we start the A500 Mini up, we're greeted with this boot screen, followed by an option to select your language. And it's worth noting that the languages here are what are in the quick start guide. I'm sure more languages would be available as well. Uh, 60 hertz, 50 hertz, um, 50 hertz, it says here, it, it says it for optimal frame rate, pick your uh, 50 hertz for your television screen and that applies even if you're in uh, North America as well. Now immediately it's that classic carousel look. You can glide from left to right through the 25 pre-installed games with a little bit of information in the top left. You can save your states, you've got a little menu along the bottom and there's little icons to signify if you need mouse and controller or controller or just mouse, uh, one to two players, etc, etc. Now by pressing menu on the controller, it brings this up. You can change your display options. Now at the end of the demo of every game, I'm going to be demoing Zool and what these look like. So the different aspect ratios, etc., etc. There's additional system options here. And uh, in my follow-up video, which is going to be about the additional games that I've added onto the mini, I'll show you even more about how you can tweak your menu options. So if you don't want to miss that, you make sure you subscribe because that episode will be released this week. So before you click into a game, if you press up on your controller's d-pad it will give you what your current controller mapping is and again you can remap your controller like i said multiple times in this video we're going to be demoing every single game and i'm going to do a balance of voiceover and native audio for the remainder of this first game alien breed 3d i'm going to let the native audio run and this whole clip is going to be in real time Pressing the home button mid-game suspends your game. You press down on the D-pad and you have four save game slots to save any of your games into. Let's take a look at the next game the A500 Mini has to offer and that is Alien Breed which is a top-down aliens inspired awesome little shooter. It's a classic and again we're going to click in to some native audio and gameplay. Welcome to Intech Systems. I think Another World looks absolutely fantastic on the Amiga 500 Mini. 
and I must admit throughout my testing of all of these games I never really noticed any glitching and needless to say I am terrible at this game and didn't really last very long and completely forgotten what to do there's not going to be much native audio because shortly after this scene I died Like many pinball games on the Amiga, pool games were just as much fun for me back in the day. And this is another belter that I have already spent quite a bit of time on over the weekend of recording this. All-terrain racing is easy to compare to the likes of Micro Machines on the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo and actually I spoke about this in one of my Amiga CD32 episodes as I'm covering the bulk of the classic Team 17 games. This is another one that I definitely need a lot of practice at and uh, for me it just oozes charm. If you look around you can see the advertisements for different games. You saw Quack there which is also another game that is featured on the A500 Mini. Now if you're like me and you really do enjoy a good game of chess then Battle Chess is definitely one that you have to play. Maybe you've never played it, maybe you have. If you're an Amiga owner, you're probably familiar with this like myself. I absolutely love the animations of the different pieces as they move around the board. This game, it kind of just is, no, is a no-nonsense kind of game. We're not overburdened with menus and, and whatnot. We just dive straight into a good old game of chess. So for me, this is actually up there in one of my personal favourite titles um, on this latest mini console, the A500. What about you guys? Do we have any chess fans that are watching? Cadaver is a game that I'm not familiar with, so for me this demo was a complete new one on me. I found it quite difficult to play and it's probably not going to be one of those games that I'm eager to dive back into, but I, I'm pretty certain that there's a lot of hardcore Cadaver fans out there, so if you're seeing this and you've got any tips or tricks that you'd like to serve up here, then please feel free to do so in the comment section below, but in the meantime, here's some audio. Well, this game needs absolutely no introduction because California Games is one of those classic 8-bit titles that shad overshadowed my, my growing up, particularly on the NES. It's a really good port and you would have noticed back there when you pick your sponsor, obviously the keyboard for the A500 Mini, the keys don't work but there is a useful on-screen keyboard so you're able to type in your name and it's easy obviously if you have a couple of players and you want to punch in a couple of names. So just bear that in mind that uh, you may have to use the on-screen keyboard in some of these games. The 
The Chaos Engine is often spoke about within the Amiga community, but I'll let you into a little secret. For me, I'm more familiar with the Chaos Engine on the Super Nintendo, but we all know that it's far, it's far superior on the Amiga. I just feel that the pixels are a little bit smoother and well-rounded in comparison to the Super Nintendo, and the colors do just have that little bit of an edge in terms of their popping. So this is, it was kind of a no-brainer for them to add this if I, if I'm honest, and I don't think the A500 would have been the same without the Chaos Engine. It can be enjoyed as a single player with CPU or with a friend. Okay, so I'm going to admit something here. A little bit like Cadaver, Dragon's Breath was a new one on me, so I'd like to take this opportunity to mock myself and say that what you see on the screen is as pretty far as I got. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Can somebody please help me? There's a common theme here because I'm about to mock myself again. F-16 Combat Pilot, whilst it looks absolutely stunning, I think I need to give it a little bit more time to fully get to grips with it because as I'm pootling down the runway here thinking, you know, I'm going to get some altitude. I was watching my altometer and as you can see on the left hand side, it's firmly at zero, but I'm thinking surely, surely this can work, can it? Hmm. Whilst that's a great animation, I wasn't overly pleased that I died, but nonetheless, it's in the A500. This is a phenomenal addition to the Amiga Mini. And uh, myself, my friend Paula used to play this and we had hours of fun. So I'm super happy that this is included. The Lost Patrol is also on the awesome A500, and this is is, is quite an in-depth game for me. It's not, not really a game that I took a shine to as a kid. I do remember my friends playing it, and as you can see on here, I pretty much look like Lost Patrol trying to navigate the menu systems. Paradroid needs no introduction from me. It is like a top-down futuristic space shooter and you play this weird little orb thing trying to dodge the mechanical enemies that litter the levels trying to get through the doors sometimes can be a bit of a pain but uh, it's fun it's cool and it's quite a frantic pace game and i would highly recommend it I'm of the opinion that Pinball Dreams is one of those defining Amiga games. This fascinated me as a little girl and that's because we never really had any arcades or pinball arcades around when I was growing up. So for me, playing Pinball Dreams was my entry into this awesome world of pinball and I think the sound design on these, this game is absolutely fantastic as well. Project X Special Edition 1993 is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up that requires the agility of a ninja. It is frantic, it is difficult, sounds good, looks good, it's one of those staple titles for Amiga fans. Destroy wave for power. Quack is one of my personal favourites on the Amiga of all time. You have to collect keys, dodge enemies, kill enemies, um, collect little power-ups and wait for the exit to open before progressing through and on to the next phase. You've got to give this one a lot of time. It's just one of those real nice time sinkers that you can completely lose yourself in and I found myself devoting quite a lot of time to this in my Amiga CD32 episode a couple of months back as well.
the sentinel the sentinel um yeah i was crap on this as well Simon the Sorcerer is another classic Amiga game. It's a point and click and you have to interact with the environment, get to whatever you want to interact with, and then you've got a little menu as you can see down the bottom. Check how cool and vibrant the world looks. I think the pixels and sprites look phenomenal. Um, and again, I'm just super stoked that they had this on here. Now you can play this with mouse or controller and for the purpose of this demo, I was using the controller and I found it super easy to maneuver. Speed Ball 2. Get this metal ball into your opponent's net. It's it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. I wish the, I've always wished the field of view was a little bit bigger though. I think that would have uh, given me a definite advantage here. But again, it's one of those classic staple Amiga titles and I wonder what the console would have been without the inclusion of this. Stunt Car Racer is flipping brilliant. I used to be mesmerized by how futuristic this looked back in the day. And you have this awesome little cockpit view, if you would, of the car that you're driving over the obstacles. And it's, it's pretty cool, actually, guys. If you've not played it and you get in your A500, then you are in for a treat with that. We're well down into the S's with Supercars 2, the Micro Machines-esque style racer with lots of projectiles. Um, again, really fun, really awesome, great soundtrack and uh, a great addition. Oh yes, we love a good mascot game and Titus the Fox was up there in the Amiga ecosystem of really cool, cute, furry little characters. Reminds me a little bit of a blue hedgehog on the Sega consoles, which is an easy comparison to make for its gameplay mechanics. But as you can see, I was blasting my way through these levels. Again, it's quite fast, which I really liked. You just, I just was dodging all the enemies and going as quickly as I possibly could. This is a definite play. And again, I think I'm gonna be spending a lot of time with Titus the Fox. Worms on the Amiga. Needless to say, I learned to play this on the PC back on those rainy dinner breaks at school. Two teams, lots of weapons. What could go wrong? Now, Zool, look at the colour palette on this, the Chopper Chops branding. We are deeply into branding here. Kind of feel cool spot and Fido Dido should just walk onto the screen. Um, really fun, def definitely easier for me to play with a joystick over a controller. So I did have a little bit of an issue with the controls here, but nonetheless, it's really fun. And we're actually going to take a look next at a demos with sound at some of the different screens uh, ratios. So now down to the secret game. 
take a peek on retrogames.biz website and go to the support section you will be able to download a couple of files you have a package a load package that you will need to install on your usb and then flicking back you'll see a bonus usb games pack which you download to wherever and then you pop that in your USB as well it should look something like this and once in there you need to unzip the files and just pop the folders on your USB stick when you put that back in the Amiga mini you'll see this menu the usb icon menu click into it and if you have additional roms on there you will have them all listed we're going to take a look at citadel now with no voiceover this is a corker of the game don't miss out on it guys What an astonishing piece of kit. It's so versatile, being able to easily add your own WHD load games. I am so, so impressed. I feel that the controller in itself is another key asset to the Mini and how it feels and delivered. Nothing about it feels tacky. Uh, it's got some weight to it as well. I was expecting just a shell of a controller or a shell of the console itself, but it's absolutely fantastic it is a must if you are a retro gaming fan and perhaps you might not have room for an amiga um in your your man caves your lady lounges your living rooms and i think this is the perfect answer and i listened to the retro hour podcast shout out to those boys and it was dan that said that this is the amiga home computer that is aimed at console players so if you're a console player and maybe you want to sample the amiga for the very first time i think this is going to be a fantastic entry for you to dive in I do believe there's uh, additional controllers for sale as well if you want to rack up a bit of two player. I'm definitely going to be investing, although nobody will play with me, so I'm just a bit of a loner. Um, if you want to play the Amiga with me, give me a shout! No, that could be perceived wrong. But anyway, joking aside guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please watch more Amiga content, it will all be linked. And I'm going to be doing a follow-up episode, like I've mentioned, and I'm going to be showing you everything additional that is now on my Amiga Mini with some demos. So stay tuned because there's more to come. There'll be more content covering this as well as we go along because firmware updates will also be arriving. But for now, have a lovely day and please subscribe. My name is Gemma Take Care and I'll see you in the next one.